May I present to you the world's first ever sodium ion powered electric skateboard. In this battery pack, there is absolutely zero lithium. And as for why this has never been done before, well, sodium ion as a battery chemistry has only really been commercially available for less than a year. I built this battery pack from scratch using 12 32140 cells wired in series to produce a 37.2 volt nominal voltage. And the total pack capacity is 372 watt hours. Although with testing with my electric skateboard, I figured out that the ESC won't turn on the motors with any voltage at 46 volts or over. And because the pack has a top end voltage of 47.4 volts, that means I lose about 5.6% off the top end. The cells are contained in a custom 3D printed PETG frame. And you can see the base plate for the second battery to eventually double my capacity to 744 watt hours. And combined, those two batteries should get me about 30 to 35 kilometers of range, depending on conditions. And these cells, they're actually pretty massive. Here it is next to a AA battery for comparison. So unfortunately, sodium ion is pretty low low energy density, it's only 135 watt hours per kilogram. Compare that to an NMC lithium ion battery at double that at 260 watt hours per kilogram. You can really see the difference when I place this 372 watt hour sodium ion battery pack next to this 360 watt hour lithium ion battery pack. It's literally half the size. Sodium ion really is a different beast, especially in the charging department, because the voltage of the cells is vastly different than a lithium ion battery. So figuring out how to charge a 12S battery pack with no off the shelf lithium ion charger would match the top end charging voltage was a pain. And my solution was to use a solar charge controller with a programmable output and buck boost capabilities. I mean, it's not the most efficient thing in the world because there's DC to DC losses but it works. And because sodium ion is a relatively new chemistry, I was kind of limited in options for the BMS as well. The best I could find for a 12S pack limits me to 20 amps output, which means I'm looking only at a 750 watt peak output for the board. So it's not gonna be super torquey, but it's only meant for gravel rail trails and doing long distance on the Trans-Canada Trail. So the question is, why did I decide to build this board with sodium ion batteries? The first reason is obviously bragging rights. I am the first person ever to build an electric skateboard that uses sodium ion batteries. And plus, I've been saying for a while now that I wanted an all-terrain board for my skate packing trips and since it's a 36 volt drivetrain anyways I can theoretically just drop the sodium ion batteries and put in my existing lithium ion batteries if I really wanted to. There is one thing that sodium ion has that I really want to put to the test with this build and that is its cold weather performance. In minus 30 degrees celsius where lithium ion only retains half of its capacity sodium ion should retain 80% of its capacity. Which means that if I do a skate packing trip in the middle of winter in really cold conditions, first thing in the morning, I will still have most of the battery power available to me. And we'll test things like the cycle life, the voltage sag, which is looking pretty atrocious, and just overall evaluate sodium ion as a power source for electric rideables. Okay, so we've talked about the battery, we should probably talk about the skateboard itself. I went with a Shaw Boards electric mountain board as the donor board. Not too much has been modified to it. I just stripped out the lithium ion battery it came with from the underside, extended the XTC 60 connector up through to the top mounted battery container where I house the sodium ion batteries. And one thing I didn't know before I bought this board is that the pulleys for the wheels are actually metal this time around, which means that all the grit and gravel that gets in there from doing gravel rail trails will have a lot less impact on wearing down the teeth of the pulley, which I am very excited about. This thing has absolutely gigantic eight inch wheels, which should eat up all the miles of the gravel rail trail with ease. We'll do a range test soon to see how much real world range I actually get. Well, we could sit around and talk about this thing all day, or we could take it out for a test ride. Well, with the BMS limiting me to only 20 amps, starting from a standstill will probably be the highest amp draw. So let's see how it starts from a standstill on like damp, mucky grass. It's got some torque. Huh, it just turned off on me. It won't actually run. I think I know why it's not working. 45.7, it's the right voltage. Let's connect. Let this sit for 10 seconds. All right, let's see. There we go, that was weird. The ESC tops out, it turns out anything at 46 volts and over, it won't run the motors. So what I think I just did there is when I regened going down that little incline there, I think I pushed the voltage just barely over 46 volts and triggered the ESC cutoff for the motors. Let's 
So I'm going pretty slow right now, but that's not a limitation of the battery. I'm on the first speed mode. This is literally my first time riding this thing, so I need to get used to it first. And it, lo it looks like it caps it out at uh, 10 kilometers an hour. Okay, so we're used to the first speed. Let's try going up to the second speed here. Speed two. Okay, that's a respectable cruising speed. That's about 17 kilometers an hour. Got the eye of the needle here. Now this, <laughs> this is off-roading. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. oh, she's super muddy. Oh, she's super muddy. Whoa, that is fishtail. <laughs> I'm actually surprised I made it that far in, to be honest. Oh, look at that. He's getting all gunked up. <laughs> Never let it be known that I don't dirty up brand new, very expensive skateboard builds with the experimental battery chemistry. Because they do. There we go. That's better. Through the water. Now let's cut across the grass. Not bad, not bad. Let's switch it up to gear three. All right, gear three, here we go. Oh, I'm, I'm limited. I'm limited to this speed. The first of two hill climb tests. She slowed down, but she got up it. All right, here we are. Here's the big gnarly hill. This is the one that my uh, lead acid board could not get up at all. And so I'm really slowing down as I burn through this battery, and it's exactly like I thought. The uh, voltage curve of a sodium ion battery is nuts. first electric skateboard ride with sodium ion batteries. So we traveled 8.49 kilometers. All right. Oh yeah, she's she's a little warm. Yeah, those, those batteries are definitely warm, but not hot. It's about what, what lithium gives me. We'll dig out my voltimeter and measure the voltage of the batteries to get an idea of how far through the pack we burned. We're at 34.19 volts. Yeah, so I just did the math and we used 51.2% of the battery, give or take. Yeah, so if I did my math right, on a full charge, assuming I don't get screwed over by the voltage curve at the low end of the charge, I should be able to do 16.6 .6 kilometers. And we threw some hills at it and some muck and stuff like that too, so it's not like we were taking it easy with the flat ground. So I'd say, theoretically, once I get my second battery pack, we're looking at a max safe distance in between charging stops of about 30 kilometers. So yeah, we really put this thing through its paces. It was a good first test run, validated how much range I was expecting to be able to get out of it. Look forward to a full range test soon to verify that we'll get that amount. And I'm really looking forward to getting out and doing more sections of the Trans-Canada Trail with this thing. World's first sodium ion powered electric skateboard.